So far, our programs was executing from the first line to the last line without skipping any line in between. But in a real world program, we have to have the provision to control the flow of program execution based on few conditions. For that, we have control flow statements in JavaScript. Hi all, welcome to the complete JavaScript beginners tutorial by CodeFiction. In this session, we discuss JavaScript control flow statements. So we are going to discuss if or if else statement, ternary operator, and switch statement. Let's start with if statement. If statement execute a statement or a block of statement if given expression can be evaluated to true. So here we have the syntax. We will start with if keyword and then within a pair of parentheses like this, we will have the condition expression. So let's write expression here. So here we have the expression it will be evaluated to true or false. If this expression is evaluated to true, then this block of statement will be executed. We have already discussed what is a block statement before. It is just a group of statement wrapped or enclosed within a pair of curly brackets like this. So if this expression is evaluated to true, then this block of statement will be executed. Along with if statement, we have the counterpart which is else. So if this expression is evaluated to false, then this else block will be executed. So that's how if else works. And there is one more thing we can have as much as else if like this. Else if inside this also we can have a condition expression like this followed by a block statement. Like this else if, we can have any number of else if like this. So the order of execution is from the top. This is evaluated first. If it is false, then this one. If it is false, then this one. And finally, if all of the above else if or if statements are evaluated to false, this else block will be executed because there is no condition for else like this if statement or else if statement here. So that's how if or if else works. Let's try a few examples here. We have already learned this modulus operator which will just return the value of the fraction after division operation. So using this operator, let's write a program to check whether a given number is even or odd. For that, I will be declaring a variable num and let's initialize that with 5 and here we have the if statement inside that will do the modulus operator with 2. If it is equal to 0, then we can say the number is even. If there is no reminder after dividing the number with 2, then the number is even, right? So that's what we are going to print within this if statement here. We'll print this, the number num, and let's concat the message here, is an even number. Currently this number 5 is not completely divisible by 2, hence it is an odd number. So we have to handle that within this else block here. Let me copy this line here and let's paste that here. And here the message would be number is an odd number. See, here we have the output 5 is an odd number. Let's try an even number. So here we have the simple program just to check whether a given number is even or odd. We can even simplify this program here because inside this block statement, we only have one statement, which is this console log statement here. When we have a single statement inside the block statement, we can ignore these curly brackets here. See, this will also works. So if you have a single statement within the block statement, you can ignore wrapping the statement within a pair of curly brackets. Now let's try another program, find biggest number from three numbers. So I will declare three variables here. Let's initialize them with some random numbers like this, B, C. So first of all, here we have the if statement. Inside this if statement, we will check the conditions for which the variable A is the biggest among these three numbers here. 
So here we have the condition A is greater than or equal to B and we have already learned these operators in our operator session. If A is the biggest number, it should be greater than B and C. That's what we are checking here. A is greater than or equal to C. Then we could say A is the biggest number. Since we have only one statement, I will skip the uh, enclosing with the uh, curly brackets. So inside this if statement, I will just print this message. A is the biggest number. Now here we have the else if statement and here we will check the conditions for B becoming the highest number. So I will just copy these conditions from here and let's paste that here. B greater than or equal to A and B greater than or equal to C. If these conditions are met then we could say B is the biggest number. If A and B are not the biggest number, then we could directly say C is the biggest number, right? So that's what we are doing within this else statement here. C is the biggest number. With the given values here, B is the biggest number. And that's what we are printing within this dev console here. B is the biggest number. Let's change these assigned values here. This time A is the biggest number. Let's make C as the biggest number. It works. This time B is the biggest number. So, so this is how we can make use of else if statements. If or else if statement gives the provision to control the flow of execution by providing a condition like this. And it is certainly mandatory to solve most of the problems that you find in a real world situation. So this is how we can make use of if statements in JavaScript. Now let's talk about ternary operator in JavaScript. Basically ternary operator is a shorthand syntax for if else statement. So first of all we'll be having a condition, an expression that can be evaluated to true or false. And here we have the question mark. If this condition is true, then this expression, first expression, right after the question mark will be returned. Else, the expression after this colon will be returned. So that's how a ternary operator works. Let's try a few examples here. I'm going to write a program to check whether a student passed an exam or not. So first of all, I'll be having this variable subject score Let's initialize that with 75 or something. So here we have the mark or score out of 100. So out of 100, the student earned 75. So I will be storing the result within this variable result. And here we have the ternary operator. In order to pass this exam, student must score above 45. So here we have the condition checking whether the score is above 45 or not. If it is greater than 45, then this expression returns passed, else it will return failed. So this is how a ternary operator works. Finally, we just need to print the output like this. Student, let's concat the result here. So student failed or passed the exam. So this is how a ternary operator works. This can be achieved with if else statement also. But this ternary operator gives a shorthand syntax for solving the problem. Let me try the same with if else statement. So I will just comment this ternary operator statement here. First of all, I will be declaring the variable result. Let's initialize that with empty string like this. Here we have the if statement inside this. I will check this condition here. If the score is greater than 45, then I will just assign the variable result with this string passed, else failed. The output is same, but this ternary operator syntax provides a shorthand method. So it is recommended to use ternary operator when there is a small expression or statement to be executed like this here. So instead of doing this, it's better to use 
generally operate like this here. So here the subject score is 75, which is of course greater than 45. So here we have the output student pass the exam. Let's try something below 45. So here we have the output student fail the exam. So this is how a ternary operator works. Now finally we have to learn switch statement in JavaScript. So a switch statement evaluates an expression and attempt to match the expression's value to case labels. Or you could say it provides a way for multiple choice selection. So here we have the syntax for switch statement. It will start with this keyword switch and within a pair of parentheses like this, we can provide the expression and everything else will be wrapped within a pair of brackets like this. Inside that we'll be having a sequence of cases like this. So first of all we have the case and along with a case we'll be having a label followed by colon. Within that we have statements like this and followed by a break. Now let me copy this case here and let me paste that here a few times. So this expression will be evaluated to a value and the case with the matching value or label will be executed. So the expression value will be matched with these case labels here. If they match each other, that particular case statements will be executed. So just before this break statement, and within this case line here, we can have any number of statements. So if the expression matches with the label, those statements will be executed until it reaches a break statement like this here. If this expression is not matching with any of these case labels or values, then we can provide a default case like this. Just provide the keyword default followed by colon and then we can provide this statement like this. Finally, we have the break statement. So this is how a switch statement looks like. Let's try a few examples here. So first of all, we'll be writing a program to return country name by code. So get country name by code. So here we have the variable country code. And let's initialize that with USA. Here we have the switch statement. In place of the expression, we can provide this variable country code. And here we have the case. So I'll just uh, provide the label, case label as USA. Inside that, we'll just print the country name as United States of America. Now let's pass the break statement here. Let me copy this and pasting for few other countries, India, um, South Africa, Canada. So IND for India. This is for South Africa. And finally, Canada. Here we are passing USA. So the expression country code is matching with this case here, USA. So this statement here is executed and that's how it is printing the country United States of America. So in between this case and this break, we can have any number of statements. All of them will be executed if it matches with this case value here. Now let's pass IND for India. So it is printing the country India. If you pass CAN, it should print Canada. So that's how this switch statement works. Now you should also know what happens if we skip the break statement in between. So let me remove this break statement from this case here and let's pass IND. See, it is executing both of these console log statement. So once a case is matched with the expression here, the execution will be continued until it reaches a break statement here. So that's what happening here. If we pass USA, it will only execute this console log statement because we have a break here. 
If this brake is not here, it will execute until it reaches a brake statement like this. So hope you understood how switch statement works. Let's try one more example. I'm going to write a program to check whether today is a holiday or not. So first of all, we'll be having a variable today and I will just initialize that with Monday and here we have the switch statement and here we have the expression as this variable today. First of all, we have the case for Monday and let me copy paste this few times here. This is for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. So if these cases matches, we'll just print this today is a working day. And here we have the break statement. Now we have the weekends, Saturday and Sunday. Here we will just print this today is a holiday. Here we have the break statement. Currently we are passing Monday, so this case here matches. Since we are not having any break here, it will continue the execution until it finds a break statement like this. So that's how it is printing. Uh, today is a working day. And this is how we can group multiple cases with a single break statement like this. If we pass Sunday, it will print this message, today is a holiday. So this is how a switch statement works in JavaScript. That's all for this session. In next session, we'll be discussing functions in JavaScript. See you in next session.